Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I want you to hear it from a little girl. This is at the Berkshire Hathaway uh, shareholder, annual shareholder meeting. And I want you to hear that a little girl can figure it out, but our Federal Reserve can't seem to figure it out. She's asking a question to Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Mr. Buffett and Mr. Munger. Hi, Hi. my name is Daphne. I'm 13 years old. And this is my sixth annual Berkshire Halfway Stand Shoulders meeting. And I've had the privilege to ask you both questions in years past. My question for you today is the following. As you know, the U.S. national debt is currently at an estimated $31 trillion, making up about 125% of the U.S. GDP. In the meantime, over the past few years, the Federal Reserve has telegraphed that they intend to monetize the debt by printing trillions of dollars, even as they insist that they're fighting inflation. Already, other major economies in the world, such as China, Saudi Arabia, and Brazil, are moving away from the dollar in anticipation of this. My question is, are we likely to face a time in the future when the US dollar is no longer the global reserve currency. How is Berkshire prepared for this possibility? And what can we do? I don't think that Berkshire's prepared for anything. I think these guys know they won't be around when, when, all, when everything hits the fan. And I think they've been benefiting because their buddies are the ones that have been printing the money. That's the problem. It's time to put all these people out to pasture. A 13-year-old can figure it out. These guys sit there and act like they're scratching their heads. They're not scratching their heads. What they're do these people, look, here's, here's Janet Yellen. She's one of them. And just to game that out further, so where do bondholders fit in in terms of the prioritization of who gets paid in a technical default? Do they get prioritized or is it just about paying the bills as soon as the money comes in? Well, you know, I, I would say that if Congress doesn't raise the, the debt ceiling, the president will have to make some decisions about um, what to do with the resources that we do have. And there are a variety of different options, but there are no good options. Every option is a bad option. And um, I really don't want to get into discussing them and ranking. You, you, know, what the, you know what the problem is? The problem is, that while you're out there doing whatever you do, uh, starting your own company, digging ditches, delivering pizzas, working your ass off, while you're doing that, this woman and all of her friends and all of the ones in their little group, they go to a college, they go to a, an Ivy League school, and then they get a stamp on their forehead that says they're smart, they're smarter than all the rest of us. Then they go straight into a, a college while they wait to get their spot at the SEC or the Federal Reserve or whatever. Then they go back and forth and back and forth to Wall Street because remember, they've got that stamp that says they're smart. When most of them are a bunch of morons, they're sitting around having their fine dinners and, and, and living on the taxpayer's money while you continue to work your butt off out there. And they're making decisions that affect your life. That's the problem. They all need to go. They all need to go. Jim Rickards gets it. DC crying about the debt ceiling solutions are unconstitutional or just stupid. One trillion dollar coin. Treasury could get 500 billion today. Call the Fed. Revalue its gold certificate from $42 to $2,000 an ounce and deposit gain in Treasury account. Eisenhower did it in 1953. Gold standard is the only thing this country needs and ever did need. Everything else is BS. I remember when I was a kid going to the movie. When I went to the movies, it was uh, two, I think it was $2.50. And I remember my dad telling me that when he was a kid, it was whatever, 10 or 20 cents to go to the movies. 
Now I take I took my two sons to the uh, the Air movie, which I highly recommend. By the by the way, Nike, uh, the, the movie about Michael Jordan and and Nike. Um, and it, you walk out of there. I don't go to the movie without having butter popcorn. You walk out of there with two kids, three guy, three people, popcorn, Coke, and the whole thing. You could spend thirty five to fifty bucks quick. Um, but just a reminder, Glint, my sponsor, gold is money, right? I think that that's, that's got to be, I don't think it's gold as, well, maybe it is gold as money. Buy, save, send, spend. Real gold instantly with Glint. Link's in the top of the description. Egreg Crypto's at it again. Um, he, he's, he's saying here that the charts are rhyming from back in 2000, uh, if you look here, 2017-ish. And right now. He says XRP is going to shock everyone. Generational wealth is coming. I hope he's right. Um, I wanted to, to show you something because I'm not going back and, and trying to pick on Tushar Jane and Multicoin Capital. I didn't just bring it up. I brought it up because when Jason Foster from Empower, he went back to a March 1, 2022 tweet of mine to retweet when he was talking about how he was um, suing to have his Freedom of Information Act request. And I, want, I just wanted to make the point. The reason I was, have, I've been going back and looking at some of these ETHgate videos and some of the videos with the guys from Multicoin Capital is because Jason Foster, obviously, what I, what I learned through ETHgate and then the FTX thing is that a lot of the same a lot of the same folks. You see Jason Foster's retweeting some of these things. A lot of the same folks from ETHgate were around the FTX thing. You don't have to take my word for it. First, that that was too short, Jane. This is too short, Jane, as well. And culture comes from the top. Culture comes at FTX from Sam. Uh, and this is the same guy that just couldn't get his mind around XRP. But he totally got Sam. Sam's an upstanding citizen. Sam is a truly exceptional human being. Um, you know, he's one of the hardest working people I've ever seen. Uh, and I think that they're not only very ambitious uh, in, in what they want to accomplish, but they're also trying to do things the right way. A Folks, this is what has baffled me about this crypto industry for all this time. 99.9% .9 of all the, of crypto social media points you towards Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a bunch of meme bullcrap. A bunch of just total BS. And it's always baffled me. The people in the XRP community army, they're like pointing at, I mean, we're, we're talking about adult stuff and what things that make adult sense. All of that other stuff, all chasing all these these crazy, I mean, I, I talk to a, people in my town find out that I do a YouTube channel and I, the easiest way for me to tell them is to say, you know, like Bitcoin, even though I don't really talk about Bitcoin, because that's all, that's what they hear. That's what they know. And they come up and they ask me about all these stupid, and I do mean stupid, meme coins that are a waste of everybody's time and, and are I, I don't understand why anybody would talk, even talk about it, much, much less tell anybody to go buy any of it. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's crazy. These same guy, this the same core group, and it's not just VCs. It's the meat. It's the crypto media. It's the traditional financial media. It's it's all. It, it gives me a feeling of of people that are intentionally leading leading retail average Joes to slaughter. That's what it feels like. While they don't, while they act like they don't understand Ripple and it doesn't make any sense. Remember, this is the same guy right here. Around shorting XRP. What are you shorting there? What's your expectation around XRP? Why are you so comfortable to short it? There's a few things that make He just can't figure this out. But, but this guy in all his wisdom thinks Sam Bankman freed. He's, oh, he's, Total upstanding guy. And then there's this one. Check this out. And, and this was the same thing that went on in Eastgate too. All these people, they, they seemed to have some kind of information the rest of us didn't have about 
the SEC and Ethereum and, and XRP and all this, they see this guy right here is one of the ones that had a hunch that the SEC might go after XRP. But he also somehow knows what FTX was doing with the with the CFTC. Okay. Uh, you know, for example, FTX has this application out uh, in front of the CFTC um, to be able to trade futures, in, uh, crypto futures in the U.S. Uh, it is the first proposal uh, that propo that uses the risk engines that were developed for crypto trading to bring to the futures market. Uh, it's the first real innovation. Remember, folks, in ETHgate, the SEC and the CFTC were working together. FTX was meeting with both the SEC and the CFTC. The people from both agencies over and over and over talk about how they work together. But then when you watch the news, you'd think it's SEC versus the world. Doesn't make any sense. This sure as hell doesn't make any sense. In an unexpected turn of events, FTX founder is making a move to dismiss the majority of the criminal charges. And we look, we live in the upside down, folks. It wouldn't surprise me if, if out of nowhere this guy walks. I mean, that's how crazy the world we Anything that makes any sense, the exact opposite. Then you got this, backed. Mass D-list, and a lot of these are Ethereum tokens too, folks. Like Ave, I don't some of them, I'm not, I'm not saying all of them are, but the weird, the one that jumped out at me is Stellar that backed is um, the internet uh, owned back discontinue its consumer facing app so they're just going to institutional folks and then actually prosper i think is over the target here we know backed has connections to gary gensler from the missing mit blockchain and money lecture lecture 18 remember the missing lecture he he had the people from backed in that lecture they were there i think so is this an attempt to spread FUD, or has BAC been given heads up by the SEC? The regulatory concerns ex uh, excuse may be a signal. The full list of delisted tokens is here. And then, you know, and, and again, I, the only reason I'm going back and reminding everybody of some things is because when Empower dropped their Freedom of Information Act requ request, ETHgate is right back on the table, folks. So I wanted to refresh your memory on a few things. Here's one of them, and I, want to remind, I wanted to remind, I don't have to remind John Deaton, I, I added him in here um, just because John is well versed in the whole Ethgate thing, so if he wanted to pick up on this, he can. Um, but I wanted to remind everybody that while everybody else, to this day, everybody in crypto is, is having to be attacked and try to defend themselves against the SEC, that this one man right here, I can't find anybody else besides Sam Bankman Freed, who's been able to not just come in and talk, but the SEC gave him free reign to create his own token factory and, and to issue them at will. Don't take my word for it, no, take his. We did not close Token Foundry. So Token Foundry is- uh, Smashed it. Uh, token Foundry is a project that uh, uh, has been enabling us to issue consumer utility tokens. Uh, and we've done many of those launches of tokens for our own companies, as well as third party companies. Uh, we're adding to Token Foundry uh, a group called Consensus Digital Securities. We'll uh, announce its existence at some point soon. And uh, so we- Is that breaking news? Sorry? Is that breaking it's news? It's not really breaking news. No? And so we, we will- um, okay. Uh, you can you I've can, uh, you can call it that awesome. if, if you want to. Um, so we will continue to do consumer utility tokens, and our friends at the SEC and, and other organizations really? around the world are comfortable that uh, if you construct a token properly and you market it properly, then it can uh, be a an element of utility on an open platform. His no, friends. We did not close the token foundry. Everybody else is like wondering what's going on. What about this right here? Remember when Patrick McHenry recently had uh, Gary Gensler in front of him? He's wanting to know if Ethereum's a security. Well, I can promise you, I've been following Ripple for a long time. They didn't do an ICO. They spent $200 million defending themselves against a weaponized SEC. And this is who, oh, they just go to conferences. They just do whatever they want. Vitalik Buterin and his friends. Is Ether a commodity? 
this, at some point next month, we're hoping we're going to have an, oppor an opportunity for people to essentially pre pre-order some of these Ether or Ether is uh, Ethereum's internal currency. So you're calling it you're calling it Ethers? Yeah, well Ether. How do you yeah, spell it? E T H E R. Okay. Like yeah. Like that void up in the sky. So right. it's uh, yeah. So we're basically be selling them at a pr at a price of uh, one thousand to two thousand Ether for our Bitcoin. So you're gonna the currency is only gonna be exchangeable for Bitcoin. Um, at the st at the start, likely like we do. Plan. By the way, these guys were literally talking to him in this, in this, as investors. Okay, and listen to what he says in a second. For partnerships with uh, some different exchanges. And my view is, is if there's a group of individuals in the middle, middle that the you know, like the Ethereum guys. Public is all right. So let me just ask a second question. So I think the end you mean a group of individuals like that? That is uh, two things. So uh, first of all, well, yes, yes, there is a risk that. We're going to we're going to completely fail, and for some reason, Ethereum is going to going to turn going to turn out to be impossible. I think that's just a risk that you uh, all, of course that you always course. that you always take when you're participating in any kind of like pre-order fundraiser or whatever. Now, I want to reiterate something I said it a thousand times during Ethgate, and I'll say it again now. I didn't want the SEC to go after anybody. I didn't want them to go after Bitcoin, Ethereum, anybody. I wanted a level playing field create a framework so that all these things can exist because but but the point is is that by Gary Gensler's own words folks his own words you can't not go after Ethereum but go after the rest of the industry it's not going to work that way that was my whole point all along I don't want them to go after Ethereum or anybody else I want them to sit down and get and everybody work together, CFTC, SEC, Congress, and, and create a framework so the United States of America can have, can beat everybody from an innovation standpoint. That's what I want. I want everybody to do well. All right. This, I, the, I never, ever ha have seen this brought up, but I wanted to show you because it's interesting to me too. Check this out. I mean, this is kind of, this one kind of was a, blew my mind a little bit. Um, from a career standpoint, very solid eight and a half year start for Ashish Burla. From engineering to VP in short order at Thomson Reuters, and then launched and sold an app to Intel in the learning technology space. Wonder what he did for the next two years pre-Ripple. And, and he was pointing at this and I was sitting there going, this, I've never, this has never come up. And so I went to Ashish Burla's LinkedIn page because I wanted to see where, what was going on. So here's what the guy's talking about. So till 2000, all right, 2009, from basically 2002 to 2009, he's at Thompson Reuters. Then he get, becomes vice president of e-commerce until 2010 at Thompson Reuters. 2010 to 2011, director of product management at No Inc. Now these are all board uh, things where he's on the board or he's, he's a lecturer at school and so they're in different years. But back to his career. His career picks up in 2013 at Ripple. See that? Now look down here. So there's a gap from 2011, there's a two year gap to 2013 and you have to wonder. That's a, that's, that's, I would call that a, a ripple of mystery or a ripple mystery. That's a thumbnail, by the way. Let's write that down. Ripple mystery. Um, cause he's been one of the core people at ripple. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button and tell your friends and family that we have ourselves a ripple mystery. And to give you a warning, this could be considered wild speculation. It could go into that category. It happens at times on this channel. Thanks for